Hi everybody, this is Barbara, Hippie Homesteader Wannabe, and I thought I'd just pop on here and do a quick, a uh, little quick video, and I'm going to share about 10 books, old books, that have helped me live a natural, healthy life. So, um, anyway, here's 10 that I recommend, no particular order, this is just the order they're sitting over here. First of all, if you're going to be close to nature, a good field guide is imperative. And uh, this is one. This is just uh, Peterson's field guide to the... And uh, now this one has like drawings and some color drawings. But it's good to have on hand, although it's not my favorite. Let me get my favorite out. My favorite for... Uh, flowers and finding herbs. This one, okay, you won't find a book like this because this was given to me. It was secondhand. It was given to the person who gave it to me, and she had had it for a while. But um, the original cover was uh, mouse damaged, and so I made this cover. And so it's been through the mill since then, too. But this is Audubon's book of... Um, for wildflowers and it has photographs and that makes it so helpful and it's got lots and lots of different flowers all different kinds and uh, and then in the back you have uh, a really good a really good uh, index and you have the information and so there are numbers to correspond from the pictures to the information and the, um, the flowers are broken down by shape and uh, color. So like all your white daisy shaped ones are going to be together. All your, your weird shaped and upright spires. And anyway, there, it's, it's been really, really good for figuring out what things were. And I have one other field guide that I like. <clears throat> and this is one that you might find in a thrift shop or something. It was put out by uh, Reader's Digest, and it's called North American Wildlife. And the nice thing about this, let me see what the year is on this, 1982. But the nice thing about this is you've got birds, you've got insects, you've got butterflies, you've got reptiles. Um, you've got everything basically and of course it's not going to go it's got the wildflowers but it's not going to go into as much detail of course as one of these others that's specifically for plants so those are the field guides and then uh, herb books this huge monster uh, was uh, published by uh, somebody, uh, a company in Arkansas called Ozark Mountain Publishing. So it's local, sort of local-ish. I mean, I'm in Missouri, so not real local, but uh, written by Deborah Rayburn. And uh, look at the thickness of that. But this, it's a little bit hard to use, but there's all kinds of information in here. But you may have to take some time hunting it out and in addition to telling about all the different herbs, it's also got um, recipes for and how to make different preparations. And in the back, you have appendixes that have, uh, here's the herbs by common name, and it, it takes you back to the pages they're on. And then uh, other things, uh, it's, it's even got a list of um, problems that you might have, health problems, and then a, a list of numbers where you can go back and find an herb. That's the part that's hard is because, like, if I'm, uh, say, looking for something for diarrhea, and, you know, and there's this list of, like, you know, 30, 40 numbers, and you have to go back and see whether it's an herb that you actually have access to or not. You know, it may be something pretty exotic because not everything in here is something you're going to find growing in your yard. Some of these are, 
from across the world. But anyway, um, so but that's been helpful, and I do I refer to that quite a bit. My favorite herb book at this point. I don't have a lot of them, uh, but this is my favorite, and uh, it's got. It's got a little bit of a picture, and it tells a little bit about how they grow and some of their uh, historical information and a little bit of lore. And uh, anyway, that's a good one. It's, it's real easy to use. It's easy to find what you want to find. Now, it doesn't always have every herb that you're wanting to look up, but it's pretty good. And... Also on health, oh man, I forgot my very favorite. I'll, I'll turn it off and we'll make it 11 books here in a minute. But this is a book about essential oils that actually was given to me by, uh, well, I got into uh, MLM for a little while. And for signing up and buying a big kit, the woman that signed me up, she gave me a copy of this. And it, I have actually used it quite a bit. It's, I, I don't know if it's like really accurate information, but it's got a, a nice professional feel, and it doesn't like push the name, the name of their company a whole lot or anything. So uh, anyway, Modern Essentials. I don't, I don't know. This has probably been reprinted and got it looks different now, but. This one dates back to uh, 2012. Anyway, I'm going to pause you just a minute. Okay, I've actually got two more health books that uh, mean a lot to me. One of them is, and I know you've probably seen this and aren't surprised I'm recommending it, Prescription for Nutritional Healing. This has tons and tons of information. And if you like to use supplements, this gives all kinds of uh, cautions as well as, you know, what might work in your situation. And just lots and lots to learn in that book. That's, and it seems really balanced. Now, they'll have you, if you did everything they said, they'll have you swallowing pills, 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 and you don't get to eat anything fun. And so, I mean, I can't go as whole hog as this book recommends, but it is good to have on hand. <clears throat> okay, this one, this is kind of funny. Uh, now, this was written by uh, C. Norman Sheely, and I believe for a little while he had a, uh, some kind of a healing, um, I don't know, outreach or uh, whatever uh, practice in Springfield, Missouri, if I'm not mistaken. I don't think he's there now, but... Uh, this is the most beautiful book. It's got, hope I don't open it to a nude or anything because there are a few, but uh, it's just got, it's like a coffee table book. It's all about different, uh, different natural remedies. And the nice thing about this book is that it covers different modalities. So it's not just all herbalism or just all um, uh, essential oils. It actually has um, homeopathics and box flower remedies and uh, Ar Ayurveda and uh, Chinese uh, traditional Chinese herbs. And so uh, anyway, that's a cool book. Now I don't necessarily do all the things, but when I have an ailment, I will go to this and see what I've got on hand that might work. So, and uh, my brother gave me this, and what's funny, um, a number of years, he gave it to me for Christmas, like many years ago, probably around, let me see what the year on it is. I'm guessing around 1995, maybe, 1998, but anyway, probably 10 or 15 years later, he sent me another copy for Christmas. Only that one's a paperback, but it's exactly the same book. It kind of tickled me. I'm sure he didn't realize it was the same book. Okay, now we're going to get into cookbooks. That was the help. And so I've got four books over here. 
this is a really nice little cookbook. It's all seasonal. It's from a men the Mennonites, Central Mennonite uh, Committee, or uh, it's a world community cookbook. So the nice thing about their books are they're, they're not just like dripping with evangelicalism or anything like that. It's more of a uh, let's live gently on the earth and let's, uh, you know, uh, take care of the earth. So so it's it's all about eating in season and natural foods. So it's I've found a lot of good recipes in this. And uh, so that's one. It says, in the spirit of more with less. And so that's my very favorite. And here it is. It's been through the mill. It's old. It's wore out. But uh, this is a working cookbook. This baby, this is my go-to for everything. And the more with less cookbook. This, this one dates back to... Um... 1976. Oh, it's the year after I got out of high school. So anyway, this is where I write like uh, my own recipes in, in the margins. And then there are really nice little um, anecdotes and tips. And uh, all of the recipes were collected from Mennonites all over the world. And uh, it's just, it's not like, you know, if, you, if you're if you in a gift shop or something and you see Amish cookbooks, a lot of those are like really decadent and lots of sweets and, you know, meat heavy and sugar heavy and lots of processed foods added in, you know, a can of mushroom soup or a, a you know, so there, or a package of Cool Whip, that kind of stuff. But this one is more actually cooking with real plain ingredients. In fact, you can even see on the front, the picture shows black eyed peas and brown rice and a piece of cheese. So, I mean, it's, and it's got a lot of recipes that are meatless or really low on meat. And they even say that their purpose was not to give you a whole bunch of meat recipes because you can get those anywhere. These are cooking from just basic things, you know, the flour and and uh, vegetables you can grow. And uh, anyway, wonderful. And one more cookbook, just a cookbook, that I think is worth mentioning. This is, uh, we've found this, it's a, a reproduction of a really old book that was published in uh, 18, 1833, okay. Uh, the American Frugal Housewife by Lydia Maria Child. And she is actually the writer who wrote the lyrics to the little song over the river and through the woods to grandmother's house we go uh, for Thanksgiving, you know, that we sing. So, and she wrote some other interesting things, but this little book has got some of the neatest just homespun philosophy in it. So, uh, but yeah, if you ever see that around anywhere, the American Frugal Housewife, and get a chance to look at it, it is really, really neat. And of course, it's got all the old fashioned stuff in it too, like how to, you know, what to do with a chicken, you know, when you like go out and get it instead of buying it, <laughs> that kind of stuff. Okay. And one more, this is my homesteading book and it looks horrible. Another one with contact paper on the outside um, and no front. This is a 1976 version of what is now known as the, uh, the, um, the Encyclopedia of Country Living, which was, uh, when I got it, it was called Carla Emery's Old Fashioned Recipe Book. And uh, look at the width of that. And it's made on newsprint. This, you know, this is my favorite picture. This is a, in a little section um, that's about vegetarianism or eating just vegetarian res recipes. Most of it is just, there's lots and lots of entries on vegetables, that how to grow them and what to do with them, how to process them, how to keep them, you know, how to, and uh this is a cool 
picture. These are cute, cool pictures where it's showing her making bread with her. I mean, the whole, this picture shows their whole kitchen table is covered with a huge, big, growing uh, whole wheat bread mass. And uh, anyway, it's, it's just, this is, look, it's the stuff of dreams. And I love it. And I know I've never been one to take as good a care of my stuff as I do. Now I'm realizing I kind of wish I tried a little harder. But uh, anyway, that's the last one I want to mention. And any of those, if you run across them in a thrift shop or a secondhand bookstore, they're worth getting. And there, there's tons more, you know. But I just thought it might be fun to share those. And if anybody else has a bunch of, uh, or a few or whatever, and would like to share their own, do it. And make your own video and... You know, I'll tag you if you tell me about it. And uh, of your favorite books for living a healthy, natural life. And I'll see, I'll see you next time.